Welcome to The Context. This episode is the third of a series and I invite you to watch the other two as well, but you can watch this one alone and still gain value from it. We are talking about collective intelligence today. Collective intelligence is a wonderful tool in order to keep pace with the evolution of our complex world. And we are taking advantage of it every day as we are using the tools that civilization has built over thousands of years. In the previous two units, we highlighted in the first how the fact that our adaptability is stretched to the limits fragments the reality surrounding too many people and when they throw in the towel for their ability to interpret it and act on it, they are still retaining their desire to understand but they take advantage of excessive abilities of pattern matching, designing superstitions, conspiracy theories, rather than coherent reason and science-based solutions. So, solution one that any individual can use is to leverage the intelligence augmentation technologies that we all have and have had for many, many years. These technologies include reading, writing, the printing press, electronic communications, but of course they also include and going to include ever more edge technologies like brain-computer interfaces and every possible way that we can leverage artificial intelligence and other ways that our civilization organizes itself. Complementary to the tools that the individuals can use, collective intelligence is our ability to structure, organize, and delegate both knowledge and tasks corresponding to leveraging that knowledge in order to develop functional objects around us, but also processes that would be completely unavailable to individuals or groups that are not using those uh, delegation and organization principles. This kind of collective intelligence is also something that we have always used. The simplest examples are how we organize society, whether we are talking about um, uh, the Egyptians uh, with their uh, strictly hierarchical uh, society or uh, the Middle Ages with uh, feudal uh, lordships or uh, the currently fashionable uh, solutions of representative democracy that we love to criticize and uh, that uh, has a series of challenges in which we will very likely address and overcome in the coming years. Each of these phases has uh, uh, been perfectly aligned with the technologies that were available. Uh, it wouldn't have been uh, possible for uh, a pharaoh uh, to learn about uh, the impressions uh, and uh, the desires uh, of uh, his subjects uh, with an instant poll. But today, in the third uh, decade of the third millennium, we should be using instant polling for so many things without worrying too much about the rate of participation 
uh, because then we can use statistics to extrapolate even from let's say 10% of a population just participating on an instant poll, the results over the entirety of the population. Of course, uh, there are specialized companies that uh, are uh, using these kinds of uh, uh, tools and we should learn from them and uh, uh, employ these tools uh, much more widely. Another example uh, of uh, collective intelligence, uh, of course, is uh, Wikipedia. Uh, something that uh, everyone thought impossible. A collaborative, uh, voluntary effort in order to uh, pool knowledge uh, without uh, specific uh, hierarchical decision-making who writes one article, who corrects and approves uh, uh, the corrections. And still, uh, Wikipedia does exist and uh, it uh, gets every day enriched and refined and mistakes get uh, corrected. It is a wonderful product uh, of uh, our uh, electronic uh, civilization. Now, the next uh, stage of collective intelligence is going to be uh, even more ambitious. Today, we have a word for it. Uh, which is um, not uh, ideal in my opinion. We should uh, search for better ways to describe it. We call them DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. They were invented a few years ago as blockchain technologies um, made it possible uh, to have decentralized uh, decision-making uh, and governance uh, structures to be designed, to be tested. Uh, and uh, whether these are based on economic incentives or not, uh, the initial experiments were not uh, very successful. However, there are a lot of people who are um, passionate about this and they are uh, bringing new versions of DAOs in existence uh, aligned with uh, and applied to different uh, uh, challenges and different problem sets. Imagine, for example, um, a, 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 an equivalent of an Uber, a car sharing service, uh, where the centralized organization, uh, the Uber incorporated equivalent, doesn't actually exist. Everyone is part uh, of uh, this uh, blockchain-based uh, decentralized autonomous organization in order to share the cars using the app uh, and uh, uh, driving people or in case of uh, uh, autonomous uh, uh, driving cars making the cars available to the network and then benefiting uh, from uh, the uh, economic value created uh, that is uh, distributed in the network and accrues to individuals uh, or uh, machines, as it were, um, proportionally to uh, the value that, uh, that they created themselves. Uh, now, the governance layers, of course, of uh, uh, these decentralized autonomous organizations are extremely um, important potentially more complex, more expensive, more uh, convoluted than not what we have today. A little bit like you can uh, dream of a dictatorship because things would be just so simple without all the talk, all the compromises, uh, all the uh, bureaucracy of uh, a democracy, uh, if we could just uh, decide what is right and then everyone would have to follow it. Well, yes, democracy is expensive. Democracy is complex. Democracy could be labeled as wasteful, but it is much better than a dictatorship for the very simple reason that it is a utopistic fallacy to believe that a dictator would be right and that they could uh, decide what everyone else uh, should be doing. So similarly, compared to democracy, 
when decentralized autonomous organizations are uh, going to start to perform tasks uh, and and um, uh, basically imply what uh, the participants should be doing through this new kind of uh, uh, collective intelligence and decision making, they will be accused of being unnecessarily complex, wasteful, uh, bureaucratic, uh, uh, and uh, isn't it just better to uh, elect uh, those who are smart enough to make the decisions. You see uh, the fallacy of uh, representative democracy uh, being uh, quite well highlighted in this analogy, because pretending that just because someone was popular enough in order to be elected, or as it is in some uh, countries, had enough money to spend in advertising to be recognizable for the voters so that they would be elected, that has nothing to do with that person's uh, ability to um, collect, absorb, analyze, and act on information that uh, represents the totality of our complex civilization. So, in order to keep pace with uh, artificial intelligence, we both have to use intelligence augmentation uh, and please go to the previous episode of the context uh, to hear more about it and and what uh, its implications are as well as we have to use better technology-based tools of collective intelligence that overcome the limitations of our current solutions and if we are able to um, take advantage of both, we have a good chance of postponing, hopefully indefinitely, the moment when anyone or even everyone uh, will give up uh, to be able to have an impact in the world, dignity and purpose in the world, because we will be able to thrive uh, as the uh, human adventure develops further, uh, becoming a multi-planetary species, looking out in the stars uh, side by side with uh, thousands or millions of types of artificial intelligences asking better and better questions and searching for answers. Thank you and see you at the next episode of The Context.